Hi everybody, my name is James Stevenson. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a student at the University of South Wales studying computer security. I'm actually graduating next month. Uh, as well as that, this time last year I was an intern at Alert Logic, a cloud security company. I also run a blog where I write news reviews and things along those lines. I'm telling you this so kind of later down the road you can understand the decisions I've made and conclusions I've come to. So why are we here? Well, most presentations start with a quote, right? So we've got one here. This is by IBM, and it's a bit buzzwordy, but what it's pretty much saying is saying we need to stay ahead of the threat. We need to look at new techniques, new methods, and this one is specifically talking about preemptive security. Now, preemptive security is the idea of doing something now, spending some money now, doing some research now to help protect ourselves in the future. So offender profiling is a type of preemptive security. And offender profiling is what I'll be talking about today. I'm going to split it up into a few sections. I'm going to talk about what profiling is. Right? I'm going to talk about why it exists and why we have it. I'm also going to talk about what already exists in the field. So some white papers, some tools, and things along those lines. And I'm also going to talk about what I've been doing the past year. So as part of my bachelor's in science, I've created a framework that allows us to profile malicious actors. But before that, what is offender profiling? Right? I keep talking about it, but what actually is it? So offender profiling is the idea of looking at a hacker, looking at a malicious actor, and figuring out what they're doing, looking at their motives, looking at their patterns, figuring out that an attack isn't just one thing, figuring out that multiple things are interlinked. Now, an example I like giving for offender profiling, uh, I'll be honest, I like giving it because it's simple, it's easy to get our heads around, is a DOS attack. Right? Let's say we're protecting a customer, and they're getting continually DOSed by a Norwegian malicious actor, right? a Norwegian hacker group. And we can look at our customer, we can use some offender profiling to look at, okay, when are you getting attacked? Let's say they're getting attacked with a sustained attack each day between one and six. And for the rest of the day, strips and drabs. We can then tell our customer, okay, put extra load balancers in place at that time. And for the rest of the day, have what you usually have. So here we're using preemptive security, we're using offender profiling to help protect our customers. So that's what offender profiling is. But why is it important? Why do we do it? So this is a quote from the Los Angeles police chief. And it's actually to do with predictive policing. But it's a great example of offender profiling. What this quote is saying is it's saying, we're not getting more money. We're not getting more staff. We have to use what we have now effectively. And that's what security and offender profiling is all about. It's the idea that security is less of a buzzword than it once was. There's no more endless budgets for security. We have to be doing that small stuff now, spending that little money now, and utilizing what we have to help protect ourselves in the future. So that's why offender profiling is important. But why is security important? We wouldn't be here today if we didn't believe security was important. So this is a stat from Malware Tech, and it's to do with WCRY. And I checked it this morning, and it's almost double that, or it's actually more than double that. And it's to do with WCRY. And this says that over 283,000 devices were compromised with WCRY. Now that's interesting for two reasons. It shows us. Yeah, security's changing, right? WCRY was a massive leap, and so were many more less publicized attacks. But it also shows us security's not going anywhere. Security's in it for the long haul. And that paired with the idea that we need to be looking at new ways to protect ourselves. We need to be looking at preemptive security, offender profiling, really come hand in hand. So that's why security is important. That's why offender profiling is important. But what already exists, right? What are some great examples of this? So this is a white paper by Mandiant. And it's probably the first white paper I ever read. And it's on APT1. Now, APT1 are these Chinese hacker group that target Western organizations. And this is a great example of an offender profiling in a white paper. It talks about their motives, talks about their attack patterns, what they do, and is a great example. We've got another one here, this one by F-Secure. This white paper goes into the Callisto group. Again, looks at patterns, looks at motives, looks at how people act the way they do. Again, we've got one by McAfee. This is McAfee's annual threat report and goes into different malicious actors, different attack patterns, and is a great example of offender profiling. So those are some um, white papers, right? Those are some white papers that exist. What about tools and techniques, right? What, what about those? So most people know about this, the cyber kill chain by Lockheed Martin. This is a model broken up into seven sections, not necessarily to do with offender profiling, but can be used for offender profiling. So we can look at reconnaissance, we can look at weaponization, actions and objectives, and really understand where in an attack a malicious actor is. And it really allows us to understand that bigger picture. Another one here, the diamond model. Breaks an attack up into four sections. You've got the adversary, the capabilities, the infrastructure, and the victim. 
and again is there to make people know that an attack is more than an IP address. An attack is an individual, a group, a machine, and really allows you to understand that bigger picture. So it does beg the question, right? If all of these great white papers exist, if all of these great techniques exist, why did I decide that I needed to spend a year out developing a framework for offender profiling? And the answer is twofold. The first part of this answer is quite simple. It's the idea that these aren't perfect, right? The diamond model isn't perfect. The cyber kill chain isn't perfect. These white papers aren't perfect. The second half part of this answer comes from experience. As I said, I worked in a SOC. I worked in a SOC for about 10 months. Great company, great organization, and great people. However, for this example, I'm going to be taking it very high level, right? We're going to talk about a SOC as if it was an ideal world. No, sadly, it isn't. So the way this ideal SOC works is we have twofold, right? We've got two, two main entities. We've got our customer and we've got our SOC. The customer has an IDS, an intrusion detection system, something along those lines, and they send traffic to the SOC. In the SOC, we have an analyst. That analyst is going to look at the attack and go, okay, well, what's happening here? Is this a false positive? Is this a false negative? And then they're going to send a remediation back to the customer. And that works really well, right, for getting quick remediation to customers. Where it lacks, however, is it's not insightful data. We have, we're not really comparing things. We're taking every attack as a one-off. And that shouldn't be the case, right? So let's add something to this. Let's add a framework that allows us to profile these malicious actors, that allows us to understand an attack is bigger than one event. And here, while the SOC has that data where they're building that remediation, let's take some of that attack data, let's shove it through a framework, and let's create a profile of the malicious actor that we can, use, we can give to the customer as a one-off report, we can give it to the customer with the remediation. So the customer really understands what's happening to them as well as fellow analysts, right? If analysts have that information about the attack, they can make more uh, better decisions. So that is why I set out to create this framework. But I keep talking about this framework. What is it, right? So primarily, it's a framework for profiling malicious actors. Again, a bit buzzwordy. So what does that mean? Well, it's a framework broken into seven sections. Sections like significance of an attack, longevity of attack, Understanding things like the likelihood, risk, impact, all of these things connected to an attack. Asks questions like, what tools were used in the attack? Did they leave any calling signs? Are they likely to attack again? Questions like this that can be answered at a high level, at a low level, can be given to a customer, can be given to a security analyst, or can be given as an executive summary or a technical report. And that diversity in how this framework works really allows you to look at that bigger picture of an attack, but look at what you want to look at, understanding that you can use one of these modules, you can use all of these modules, and it really has that diversity. Now today, I'd love to spend hours talking to you about all of these modules. I'd love to talk about the, the pitfalls, the strengths of them. Sadly, we don't have the time. What we do have the time for, however, is to talk about one of these modules, to grab one of these modules and to talk about how this module allows you to look at the bigger picture, how offender profiling as a whole allows you to look at that bigger picture. Before I dive into one of these modules, I do want to talk a bit about data. So this module, uh, sorry, this framework is completely manual at the moment. It's all done by hand. So I could give you a book and you could pretty much go through this framework. As well as that, the way it collects data, so the way it aggregates malicious actors, at the moment it's all done by IP. And I'll tell you why that fails in a little bit. Before that though, this module, right? So this is a spreadsheet where I took data from a honeypot I was running using one honeypot network, and I shoved it into it. And this module specifically creates graphs like this. And the way this module works, it looks at significance of an attack. And the way it works at significance, it says the longer an attack is, the more significant it is. Now that's not always the case, but it's a good baseline. So the way this works, we say, okay, if multiple events occur in a time frame. Let's increase the significance. It doesn't quite double, but we'll say it doubles. And then if events don't occur in a time frame, let's half-life it, let's decrease it. So we get these peaks and we get these troughs. And that allows us to start comparing data. That allows us to start going, are these events related? Are these events connected? And that really allows us to see that bigger picture. And that's what this framework is all about. It's all about seeing that big picture, understanding for yourself, your customers, or your team, the bigger picture of security. And that's what it set out to do. But it does have its flaws. These are a few of the flaws I've picked out myself and a few of my friends and peers have shown me. Some of these, like, as I said, socks don't work that way. They're not that simple. You have SLAs, customers not understanding remediation. If I'm using that as an example, surely I should be using something else. 
Again, I use the DOS because the DOS is easy to explain. If I go to fit even more complex attacks, they're harder to get your heads around, and my head as well. Aggregating by attack. So, as I said, um, if I'm looking at a malicious actor and I'm saying, if he has the same IP, or she has the same IP, then it must be the same person. And that's not the case. What if they're using a proxy? What if they're using a Tor exit node? That could be multiple people. Correlation does not imply causation. That's an interesting one. What that's pretty much saying is the opposite of what this framework relies on. This framework says, okay, well, if something equals something today, then surely it should equal the same tomorrow. And that's not the case. Attackers can't really be predicted. And then finally, risk just isn't that easy to work out. Just because you define something as low risk doesn't mean it is. So, do I think the framework sets out what it's set to do? Yes, it can be used for profiling malicious actors. But it's not perfect, right? It would be unfair of me to say the cyber kill chain wasn't perfect. It would be unfair of me to say the diamond model and those white papers weren't perfect if I didn't say my own model wasn't perfect. But then again, nothing is perfect. Just like offender profiling, where you should be looking at multiple attacks, you should be understanding the bigger picture, security is the same. You can't just use one technique, one model, even one framework. You have to be using a myriad of these. And I think this quote summarizes that quite well. It's the idea that intrusion analysis isn't just about one tool. It's not just about one technique. It's about much more than that. And I think that actually comes quite into B-Side's idea of the conference today, the idea about sharing is caring. I think that summarizes it quite well. And I'm quite, sh uh, quite a lot of time left. But that is the end of my talk. Um, I said I've been James Stevenson. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me now. You can find me afterwards. Or as I did say, I also have a website, so you can also find me on that. Thank you.